Uh, okay, so uh, the next speaker is uh, actually he has a six pack. So um, no, I'm serious, but you can't ask him to show it. But the wife is here. Um, Thomas Lim, he's from Edible Gardens. Uh, he gave up his job in uh, uh, banking world, and then now he's a full-time farmer, right? So let's welcome Thomas. He's going to tell us the story of the three vegetables in Singapore. Thank you, Kelvin. Hello. Okay, so my name is Thomas. Um, like Kelvin say, I used to work in finance and banking, and uh, that was about three to four years ago. And now I'm back in Singapore. I was previously in Hong Kong, and I'm now part of this organization called Edible Garden City. So uh, not sure if how many of you have heard of it, but you might guess, as the name suggests, Edible Garden City, what we are trying to do is to turn our garden city edible. Okay, by getting more Singaporeans to grow their own food. So today we work with many different organizations, sometimes with, um, with shopping centers, like one of our closest farm, rooftop farms is just 10 minutes walk from here at Raffles City. Uh, there's a rooftop farm up there. We work with schools to teach kids how to grow their own vegetables. We work with um, residences as well, old folks home, boys home, many different organizations. So I've encountered quite a few different growing systems like Ben, um, so I'm just trying to share all the th uh, three kinds of uh, vegetables with you that I've seen and grown in Singapore. And the title of this story is Made in Singapore, the story of three vegetables. So the first vegetable that, that we have, okay, it grows up in a very nice little flat in some part of Singapore. Okay, so it, this is what you see, uh, the vegetable probably a few days old. Uh, it doesn't, because it doesn't grow in soy, so you see that it's grown in pumice stone, which is a kind of volcanic rock. So it's taken, it used to be taken from the USA, but because of environmental considerations, now it's taken from Mexico. And it sits in this very nice, clean little white plastic container that is made in China. The seeds are imported from Australia. Okay. The tap water watered is from Malaysia. Because it doesn't use soy, it doesn't use compost, it's too dirty, so they use uh, macronutrients, which includes nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium from India, and it also needs other micronutrients and other trace elements like magnesium, calcium, harvested from different parts of the world, uh, one of the main countries, Canada. And obviously, to process this mine minerals into um, plant digestible nutrients, you need to use quite a lot of fossil fuel to do that. It's similar to the process of making bombs. So fossil fuel from Middle East. And because we are asking a lot, so much about productivity nowadays, the vegetable is made to grow in 24 hours. The slide is, the contrast is a little bit off, but if you see on the right side, the owner is actually sleeping on a couch while the vegetable is growing 24 hours, powered by again fossil fuel from the Middle East. LED lights, probably from China. So this is for, um, the vegetable growing one to two weeks old. And now about three to five weeks old, we have a local vegetable grown in Singapore. Okay, so this is the first vegetable. Uh, for those of you familiar with the term atas, in Malay it means quite high class, quite sophisticated. Okay, it doesn't really touch any dirt. There's no soil involved. Okay, it's grown completely indoor. Um, there's a lot of R&D involved, a lot of PhDs, you know, a lot of high technology. And because of that, it's patented, lots of patented technologies. It's sterile and there's no soil involved at all. Okay, very little time and effort needed. You just need to power it on, set it up. And this is uh, what people call the system that is beyond organic. It's a better than organic. Okay, so now we go into the second vegetable. Um, this vegetable grew up in a school in a part of Singapore. So before that, this was what, uh, before the vegetable patch, this was what was in the school. Okay, it was an empty grass patch that was just sitting there doing not really anything. So the, to make planter beds, instead of using things like bricks or cement, the planter beds are made from logs from the prune trees growing by the roadside. The big rain trees, sometimes they get too big, M Parks needs to chop them down so we get these logs and then we put them, uh, arrange them into a nice planter bed. So all the wood is grown organically in Singapore. The newspaper is a waste material that we take 
uh, after reading them, and we use them to cover the weeds. So again, from Singapore. So we get a compost from a place in Lim Chu Kang where all the chopped trees, the prune leaves, they get sent there, shredded, and then it goes through this big composting process to be, um, to be made into nutrients available for these vegetables. So we get them from uh, Lim Chu Kang. It's made in Singapore again. And then planting seedlings and plants, some of them from Singapore that we grow ourselves, some of them that we purchase from nurseries in Malaysia and they ship it over. And coconut, uh, coconut fiber on top of the soil to protect the soil, retain moisture, retain nutrients in the soil. Probably from Malaysia, again, from coconut waste. Okay, so we, the, 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 so, uh, the energy is powered by the sun. So I guess it's from the sun. Rainwater harvested from partially watered by rainwater, especially when, during the monsoon season. So again, from Singapore. And occasionally, when it's not enough, we have to use tap water. Uh, so that is from Malaysia. So after a few months, this vegetable grows up. It's a, again a local vegetable made in Singapore. So this vegetable, the second vegetable, okay, it involves a lot of soil, a lot of dirt, bacteria, fungus, microbes. Okay? It's very much like a kampong cell. A lot of people require, a lot of labor required. Everyone gets together, make a lot of noise, you know, shovel things, a lot of uh, manual labor required. Okay, there's a lot of biodiversity. You see earthworms, butterflies, caterpillars, bees, and all kinds of bugs flying around. So going on to the last vegetable, our third vegetable. So it grows uh, along HDB corridor, together with friends like uh, you know the shrine, the bicycles. So the planter firstly is um, taken from reclaimed timber, sometimes from decking wood in Singapore that is, uh, people want to throw them away. You can take them and then just drive a sc few screws into them, make them into a nice little planter. The soil and compost is from Singapore. Okay. Um, the plant cuttings or seeds, sometimes from vegetable cuttings or, or things that you pluck, sometimes from weeds like Ben said, you put them in, okay, again from Singapore. We use um, sugarcane pulp harvested from the hawker cent uh, taken from the hawker center. After they squeeze the sugarcane juice, the pulp left is actually really nutritious, very good. Um, there's still lots of good stuff in it, lots of fiber. So it's good for covering the soil and protecting the soil, retaining moisture, again from Singapore. Um, tap water that is uh, taken after washing rice or vegetables. And sometimes after showering, uh, you can stand on a in, in, in the middle of a big basin and shower. And all the dirt that's on your body, the dead skin, is actually really nutritious on the plant. So you use it to water. And then vegetable waste from the household, lots of crushed eggshell from the kitchen, again from Singapore. Um, if you want to put the effort into doing it, dead leaves from the roadside. Sometimes, after sweeping it up, they put it in very nice big plastic bags for you to collect. So you can even take them. And lastly, um, it doesn't get a lot of sunlight because it's a balcony, but it gets somewhat sufficient. And because of that, you choose plants that grow uh, easily in partial sunlight. So the one you see here is actually a native vegetable called Sayomanis, or in, it literally means sweet vegetable in, in Malay. Okay, so this is our third local vegetable grown in Singapore. So the third vegetable is very thrifty. You know, it doesn't really, doesn't really want to spend any money. Everything is DIY. You take it from your home. Vegetable waste, dead leaves, all these things. Um, it's always about scavenging for things around you, using the waste materials around you. Uh, it takes lots of time and effort. Okay? So in some sense, not very productive. So this is the end of the story um, about three vegetables. As to most stories, there's always a message behind it, but I will not tell you the message. You have to think about it yourself. Um, but think about this words, local and sustainability. What does it really mean to you? And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, just, just a quick question. Um, why, why did you leave your financial world for this world? Uh, to me, when I was in finance, I... I got a lot of chance to travel around the world, uh, around Asia. I was based in Hong Kong, and I, I kind of saw and I think reading a lot about the social issues in the world. Uh, there seem to be so many health issues, a lot of environmental issues, so many things, and I think a lot of them tie into how we grow our food. 
um, environmental, environmental issues especially. I read an article that uh, the biggest pollutant in China don't come from factories, they actually come from farms. So that really struck me about the way we grow food, about things like urbanization, why can't farmers earn enough, why do people always want to move into cities, crowd out the cities, create ghettos and all that, and it made me think, and I think um, I have to grow my own food to really understand all these issues. Okay, thank you very Thank much. you, Kevin. Awesome.